I'm David Mendoza, an associate professor in industrial and systems engineering at RPI. And today I'll be talking about network improvisation in emergency response. The application area is debris removal operations, uh, an understudied but uh, still economically and socially important aspect of emergency response. Uh, this type of activity, debris removal, has been going on ever since we've had debris inducing disasters. Uh, ranging from the Lisbon earthquake of 1755 to the San Francisco earthquake in 1906, Japan tsunami in 2011, and uh, New York City ground zero attacks in 2001. What these events and many others share in common when it comes to the debris removal phase is the utilization of small teams of human beings acting collaboratively, often in concert with equipment, sometimes heavy equipment, sometimes primitive equipment, to remove debris, clear roads, and enable the economy to recover. For example, after Hurricane Katrina, there were large parts of the southeastern U.S. that were subjected to high winds producing large debris fields. The debris removal operation took place over many months involving thousands and thousands of teams. In debris removal in uh, areas such as this, the operations consist of pushing debris to the roadside where it's then collected by smallish teams, eight to 10 people, with equipment who load the debris onto trucks. The trucks are then transport the debris to temporary debris storage and reduction sites. The loads at those sites are then estimated by human operators. The size of the load produces an estimate of the cost of that load which is then noted on a ticket. That ticket is given to an operator, the driver of the truck in this case. The accumulation of those tickets produces a large part of the cost of debris removal. In this work, we are t attempting to understand both the human operators that are part of the debris removal team, how they interact with each other and with equipment, and the system in which they operate in order to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of their work. As the previous discussion suggests, debris removal operations are comprised of interlocking loops of pickup and drop off of debris. Debris is hauled by trucks who may then enter and exit different loops within the system so that trucks traveling from one pickup site to one drop off site may decide to adapt, change their destination, and after dropping off, head back either to the same team or to a different team. This produces what's known as a queuing network, which is comprised of many interlocking loops, similar in structure, differing in their properties, for example, how quickly trucks move through them. After Hurricane Sandy, which covered the Northeast United States, debris was produced in many different cities and states where it's not normally found. In this work, which is being supported by the National Science Foundation, we're focusing on the debris removal operation in New York State, specifically in Long Island and in related areas. One of the areas that we're focusing on is Fire Island which is a barrier island located to the south of Long Island. Long Island, and in this case Fire Island, present many novel challenges for debris removal. Unlike mainland activities, they can be subject to pinch points along the roadways since access to these islands is limited or non-existent. Moreover, the roads can be highly congested. On Fire Island, we're working to collect data on how debris teams are functioning on the one hand, but on the other hand, given that this was a highly non-routine and novel event, we're also studying the structure and evolution of the organization tasked with debris removal. As I mentioned, there are many special constraints associated with this mission. On Fire Island, the roads are often sand that limits the size and carrying capacity of vehicles transiting the roads. There were numerous cases where structures were blocking the roads. Perhaps 
Equally importantly, many of the roads simply cannot be passed with trucks. Debris stationed along the roadways must be hauled out either by hand or in very small barrels. On the one hand, we have the organizational structure that's associated with the typical debris removal operation. It consists of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, numerous subcontractors, schedulers who decide where trucks should be positioned, and then the debris removal teams themselves, which act to load the debris from curbside onto trucks and then unload it at temporary debris storage and reduction sites. Using content that's being provided by state and federal agencies, we've been able to identify how this organization has differed from standard practices and also what, how it has evolved over time. In this case, we're considering minutes that were taken during high-level planning meetings of the organization. From here, using content analysis techniques, we can identify and measure the types of units, new units in the organization that came in or went out from it. In this case, it's a school that in a very novel kind of uh, event has become part of the organizational decision-making structure. Second, we draw upon a recent technological innovation in debris removal, which is the use of automated load tickets. Now it's standard practice for these tickets to be electronic so that all the loads are identified electronically for pickup and drop off, location and time. This enables us to reconstitute many parts of the organization and also to say with a high degree of specificity which loads were hauled from which location to which other location at what times and by whom. Using the load ticket data, we can identify all the contractors that were active in the operation as well as all the trucks that were assigned to debris removal teams. This enables us to characterize the impact of factors such as turnover and team size on the performance of the organization assessed along multiple dimensions. As far as the structure of the work system, using similar techniques to the previous, we can identify both work practices and new elements of the system that may or may not differ from those that are part of standard practices. Again, using content coding techniques, we can identify both the productivity of nodes in the system, in this case, a TDSR. We can also identify problems that affect links between nodes in the system. For example, difficulties associated with moving debris from one location to another location due to weather events. Third, we can identify how new nodes propagate and develop in the system. In this case, it's a barge that was not previously part of the system that's brought online in response to local requests. Similarly, using load ticket data, we can identify the productivity of individual sites and individual teams over time. This enables us to address questions of efficiency, effectiveness, and fair distribution of effort of teams throughout the mission. We combine statistical techniques with simulation-based techniques to ask questions about the possible or likely functioning of the system under different scenarios, including ones that were actually on the ground. We're using data from Fire Island associated with two TDSRs relative to six different pickup points to attempt to estimate how different patterns, different techniques for assigning trucks two locations can impact the overall performance of the system. We develop a simulation-based model based on a set of working assumptions as well as data from the field to characterize empirically what is going on within the system. We then take additional measures from the field collected with RPI students over a series of three to four visits to Fire Island. This enables us to estimate loading and unloading times for different scenarios in different debris removal teams. We then are developing assignment policies to determine how trucks can best be scheduled and assigned to teams. In this case, we're considering an optimal assignment policy, uniform assignment where teams are assigned based on other teams, trucks going out of the system, and finally, random assignment, 
which is really a stochastic type of uh, assignment problem. What we see here is that as the number of trucks in the system increases, although optimal assignment continues to be the best choice, it is soon essentially co-equal with uniform assignment. What we hope in the long term is that techniques and approaches such as this one will be able to contribute to real-time control of the system so that as the system and as the debris removal operation unfolds, we can improve its efficiency, its effectiveness, and the fair distribution of effort. Thank you for watching today's talk. This research is showing how statistical optimization and data modeling based techniques can be used to improve the efficiency, effectiveness, and fair distribution of effort of debris removal operations following large scale disasters. Thank you.